Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I want to talk about The Division Heartland. Now, if you're like me, you have been watching the two trailers that we got for the game on loop since last week when they were revealed during Division Day. That is, of course, the cinematic intro as well as the dev diary, which went over some of the gameplay and systems that we can expect from the game. Now, rightly so, a lot of the focus about the Heartland conversation has been on, you know, the actual systems of the game, the gameplay, things like that, because that's what we all care about. We want a fun new Division game to jump into. But something that I think has flown under the radar quite a bit since that reveal and since all the stuff that we got that day was the story and significance that Heartland is shaping up to have for the Division universe. Because there were a lot of very interesting details that were just kind of sprinkled in there that I think a lot of people overlooked, and I kind of want to jump into those today. As I always tell you guys, I am not a lore aficionado, but I do like to speculate, I do enjoy the story, and so I want to go over some of those details and what we can expect from Heartland as a new entry in the Division universe. If you end up enjoying this video, a like would be greatly appreciated, and be sure to click that subscribe button as well as turning on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on all of my future Heartland videos and coverage. Without further ado, let's get into this. Alright, so to start off, we have the cinematic for Heartland that was released back during Division Day. I think we've all seen this by now. If not, I will certainly leave a link for it in the description below. It is definitely worth the watch to see with the full audio and stuff like that. It's super cool. And I have to say, one of my favorite parts about it is the introduction that we get to the character of Killian Tower, who seems to be the main antagonist for Heartland, the one that Mackenzie Reed, who is the Division agent narrating the whole thing, that's the one that she's pursuing. And it's cool because in contrast to the Division 2's current big bag with Natalia Sokolova, uh, it very much seems like Killian is going to be a new keener type of figure where he actually is the physical threat himself, and he has some sort of master plan that we don't know about and we're trying to catch on to and catch up with him. So super cool, love the concept of Tower as a villain. Like I said, I think the majority of us saw that cinematic, but the other really integral part to understanding kind of the lore and story setup of Heartland here is the lore recap and kind of story continuity trailer that we got narrated by NGN. In case you turned off the Division Day stream as soon as the news was over, this was played at the end of the stream, and then NGN uploaded it onto his own channel. I've already spoken before about how I love this trailer. Huge props to him. It was an awesome thing to pull off. And 100%, if you did not end up seeing this on Division Day, I will link it down below. It's worth watching. It bakes Heartland's story right into the pre-existing continuity that we understand with the Division universe. It's super cool because it uh, outlines the events from the Division, the Division 2, the Division Heartland, and the Division Resurgence all on one cohesive timeline and it's really neat to see the stuff tied in like that. And this is where we start to get some of those super interesting bits of information that I was talking about and where I kind of think it starts to paint a picture of what Heartland's story could be about. So the first big notable thing it says in this trailer is the fact that during the events of the Division 1, so they say back during January, right after the outbreak, while we are in New York fighting and all of that, there is a team of Division agents that is sent to Silver Creek to quietly secure a government seed storage complex. Now, from some of my research that I did, a siege storage complex, I think, is a way to ensure there are no food shortages. It kind of gives a backup of all these different types of seeds and ways to grow crops. Makes sense, right? But I wonder if there's more to it, because later on in that same trailer, when he's talking about the events of the Division 2, there's a very notable detail where it says that at the start of the game, you know, when the SHD network goes down, that's the whole point of the first few missions we do is to get the network back up and running. Well, when that distress signal went out that we saw at the start of the game, you know, in that intro part, that's when we get the distress signal and that's when we go to D.C. Every agent in the entire country got that same distress signal to say to go to D.C. and help with the issue, except for the agents protecting that complex at Silver Creek. Everyone else got it. The people in New York, the people protecting the Shade Cores, which is, of course, a concept you see elaborated on in the novels. Everybody except for those agents at Silver Creek. That's pretty notable. And tying things back into the cinematic, there is a big emphasis placed on the mystery of the whole setup of this story. Uh, Mackenzie is trying to figure out why her former commander, Tower, uh, eliminated his whole team and just booked it towards Silver Creek, why he's there. The trailer also makes a point to highlight that Mackenzie Reed is a virologist expert. You see that in her file when it's placed down on the table. And one of the huge, you know, big concepts in Heartland is this uh, idea of the new and improved contamination or the more lethal form of the contamination. And she says in the trailer, why is the contamination different here? It's part of that overall mystery. 
And so my kind of baseline speculation off of all of this is that for the general premise of the Heartland story that we're going to be diving into is that I wonder if Killian's motivations and the new virus contamination we're seeing in Silver Creek and this very mysterious government complex that they think is so vital to protect is all connected together. Because Heartland is pitched as the furthest along game property that's taking place in the timeline. In that NGN trailer, it's the very last thing he touches on as taking place in August of the year after the outbreak. And so, I wonder if something with this government lab is going on more than we realize. There's a team of Vision agents protecting it, that's why some of this extra contamination stuff is cropping up there. And if Tower has some sort of plan to either harness that or utilize it to unleash further devastation on other parts of the country. I don't know. There's tons of possibilities, but I find all of these teases that we got during Division Day to be super interesting. So guys, for now, that is about all I have to share with you about the general story teasers that we've gotten for the Division Heartland. As I said, I think the majority of the conversation has been placed on the actual systems and the gameplay of the game, and especially for being a free-to-play, uh, more gameplay-driven game. I think a lot of people have kind of discounted how the story will have any real significance on the great Division universe. But if anything, this information that we've learned has kind of pointed me to the idea that Heartland will be just as significant, if not, you know, even more so to the ongoing story of the whole Division universe moving forward. And I'm just really excited to see if and how that might take place. I very much hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on any and everything regarding both Heartland in general, but more specifically the story. What were your thoughts after watching the cinematic trailer and the kind of lore recap that NGN gave? What connections do you make between all of these different pieces of information? What sort of speculation and predictions do you have for the general Heartland story? Whatever your thoughts are, leave them down below, and I will, as always, be very curious to read through them. If you want to stay connected with me and share more of your thoughts on Heartland, the links for my Twitter and Discord server are in the description below. Highly encourage you to click those. But yeah, everybody, that is about all I have to share with you today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Rogue Gold. Ow.